Hello friends, my name is Shivam from DevOps Schools and I will help you to enable your learning process in various technologies of DevOps, artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data and many more. This is our initiative to help you by sharing multiple tutorials and videos. And if you want any specific tutorials or any particular topic, then please do comment in the below comment section and I will help you with it. Also, please subscribe to our premium services on YouTube, which will give you access to more content and videos to enhance your knowledge about all these topics. Also, if you want me to help you with regards to the online trainings and classroom sessions by our qualified trainers, then do please do write me at uh, contact at devopschool.com. Thank you. Yeah, AWS console login. Uh, yes. AWS management first console. Yeah. yeah, first one. Uh, already have an account sign in. Yeah, click on this. So when it comes, you say um, I am. You select the, that I am. Uh, yeah, you give your account ID over here. Account ID is the one which I have privately texted you. Yeah. Copy that. This one, right? Uh, this is an account ID, so it's not a username. So change the account ID on the top where you have a seven four four nine seven four. Change it there. Your username is Shivangi, your name. Yes. Your password is the one which I have texted you. You click on sign in. Now the old password, which you have just recently copied. Uh, write your new password, whatever you want. Okay, one second. The two. Yeah, the password did not match. So now Shivangi is logged in into my account and as being one of the user called Shivangi. So Shivangi go on the top of services. Just type S3. Yes. Select S3. Yeah. Select S3. Great. So as you guys know, Sivangi is a administrator. I've given her an access of S3 administrator. And she's an administrator on S3, so she can do whatever she want, okay? 
she can create bucket she can delete bucket uh, she can do whatever she wants so the buckets have been loaded loading for you shivangi um so over on the on the left hand side uh, on the top you have this create bucket option can you see that there is bucket uh, option uh, on the right hand side over here there's a button called create bucket there's a button orange One button one second. Just right inside. Yeah. Where you see the bucket list, right? There's a bucket option, create bucket. Yeah, yeah, I'm done. Yeah, write any bucket name. You can write your own name or any name you want. Make sure the bucket name is unique because if it's been taken from anyone else, you won't be able to create this bucket. Leave everything default and come at the down, like come at the bottom. Leave everything, whatever it is. Just come at the bottom and click on the create button. Wait for some minutes, uh, the bucket has to be created. So Shivangi has created a bucket. Can you upload something in your bucket, like anything? Uh, create a text text file or any file, um, and then upload it in your bucket. You created a bucket, Shivangi. Click on that. There's a link here. Can you click on that? If you want to upload anything, um, yeah. There's just scroll it down and try to upload something. Yep, click on add files. Scroll it down and click on upload. Let all the values to be whatever it is. Scroll it down and upload. You must select a checkbox. No, that's fine. Just click on upload. Uh, should I check it or not? Oh. Uh, yeah, check check that. Yeah, it's asking because for because it, it is not taking the time. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, yeah, check that. Check that. Click on upload. So now I'm the file upload. has been uploaded successfully. Yeah, you you go back. Uh, go back to a bucket. Yeah, you can go to destination. There is a link, right? Click on that. Yeah, this one. If you scroll it down, you will see that there's an object which you have uploaded. Right? Yeah. Can you go back to the bucket again? Yeah. Vasant, if she pings that object uh, URL, we should be able to see it, right? Object URL, you will be able to see it. Uh, huh, yeah. Just go back to your bucket and delete the object which you just uploaded. Uh, this is the object I created. Yeah, check. There's a check mark. Select the check marks and then the action. 
there's a check mark yeah hey viewers trying to get into devsecops and all for our devsecops certified professional programs and earn the certification that shows you are fit for these technical roles and requirements contact info is mentioned in the video sidebars and in the description box book your seats for the upcoming batches now delete and then there's an action yeah you can delete yeah click on delete and this will ask you to type permanently there's like permanently delete this will ask you to type that in the field yep right permanently delete okay delete object click on delete object it's deleted deleted right okay so now yeah. what all actions shivangi did these all are the actions she's allowed what? to do it she she created a bucket named as yeah a showing failed to delete does it can you see the object it says no, no object, object failed, to failed to delete yeah, yeah no object failed to delete means the, the object has been deleted okay Okay, so uh, Shivangi is able to create bucket. She's able to upload objects. She's able to delete object on the bucket. Okay, now Shivangi, go back to screen again. The dash over here. top left and three. Your voice is breaking. Uh, uh, no, we are not able to hear. What is that? Okay, hey. Angi, can you go Amazon? One second, can you repeat, please? It on the top. Yeah. This is a this. Can you stop? Yeah, can you... Your voice is not uh, clear. Okay, let me just switch to. How about now, Shivangi? Can you hear me? Yeah, it's proper. Okay, so Shivangi, can you click on? Uh, so, uh, as you guys saw that Shivangi is able to create bucket, she is able to um, upload the things, she is able to delete the thing. Okay, on the bucket which she created, Shivangi, there is a bucket called Sony Demo Two. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Click on this. Yes. Click on this. And there is an object down over here. Can you select and delete it? The si yeah, select and delete it. Okay. The similar way you did. Yeah. I go back and. Yeah, one That time I was getting an option of permanently delete. Now it's only saying you need to type delete. 
this is because I have enabled a versioning. That's completely fine. Click on delete object. Okay. Does it delete? No, it says fail to delete one object. Not you. Yeah. You get you get an error on the left and on the right hand side. You can see the error saying that access denied. Over here, over here on the on the below, just like uh, on the object on the right and left right hand side, just after size, you see that error access denied. Yeah. So what has happened, guys? I hope this has been clear to you. Shivangi, being an admin of the S3, she is able to create buckets. She is able to delete objects, whatever bucket she has created, and wherever she wants to do it, she can do it. But she cannot delete the object under Sony Demo 2. Can anybody explain me why that is, or why that is, uh, why Shivangi is not able, even she is being the administrative role, why Shivangi is not able to delete the objects under Sony Demo 2? Shivangi, can you tell me why you are not able to delete it? Uh, might be in access control list. Uh, uh, we don't have the permission to delete. Uh, that's why. Whether it's a permission in access control list or it's a permission in bucket policy. Yeah, sorry, bucket policy. So if you go to to the bucket again on Sony Demo 2, One like second, on the source. Yeah. Yes. Hey viewers, our Master in DevOps engineering program can help you to hone the skills necessary to succeed in high level DevOps positions. So what are you waiting for? Enroll now and earn certification that show you are keeping pace with today's technical roles and requirements. Contact info is mentioned in the video sidebars and in the description box. Book your seats for the upcoming batches now. Can you go to permission? Yes. Scroll down. Yep, over here. Over here. Hold on. Okay, so guys over here, I have written that everyone, you see the principle, principle says star, like means everyone. Effect is denied. Everyone is denied to delete the object under Sony Demo 2. That's why even with the role of administrator on S3, Shivangi do not have permission to delete objects on Sony Demo 2, but she's she was able to create buckets. She was able to upload objects. She was able to do the action on the rest of the buckets. She can create n number of buckets and can do n number of actions on, on all the buckets, but cannot delete the object on Sony Demo 2. Right, so this is what I wanted to explain that that bucket policy is is what is being the policy which is specifically attached to a one bucket and that to the task with the bucket uh, that comes with a one on one relation and whatever you have written on bucket policy and if it's a deny in the bucket policy or any conditions in the bucket policy uh, your file you know your uh, um, action like your deny action will override the allow of IAM. So <coughs> both of the actions like your IAM has to be allowed, your uh, bucket policy has to be allowed, uh, then only you will be able to perform the action. So let's suppose that you have a bucket policy or you are working on the on the on any of the S3 um, bucket <coughs> and you are, you accidentally you, you are trying to upload something, but you are not able to do that. Do check the bucket policy that the bucket policy allow you to do perform the actions or not, because that is where your bucket policy or your actions will come into the picture, right? So your your IAM role comes first, then comes the bucket policy and access control list of your S3. OK, thank you, Shivanki. You can stop presenting and I'll take uh, the you know session from here. Yeah, thank you. Now let me share my screen again. Now you, I hope you are able to see the screen. So the thing or the talk over here is that if we go back to our um, this particular image, let me just have a new image. Discard the changes. 
Okay, so if I want to talk over here, I wanted to let you know one of the topic, which is which says that your IAM role comes first. That's like IAM role. And the policy which you have attached with the IAM role comes first. But if it's allow. Okay, and then after that on the bucket, you're sorry. After that you have uh, you have another policy that's called a bucket policy which has been allowed you know attached with one of the bucket so first you are allow if it's allow and your bucket policy says denied then the action will be denied like denied will take the override you know override the uh, allow if your im rule is allowed your bucket policy allowed and your access control list uh, that specifically applies on the object that is also allowed then you will you will be able to do the action Okay, so all these things bucket policy is a policy which attach with the um, You know a bucket policy is a policy which attach with the specific bucket Okay um, So So yeah, so that is that is there Okay, so we now we understand that as we are moving from I am policy and we are we are going to we, we looked upon to the bucket specific policy so what specifically s3 bucket policies are well, uh, I would say that they are the one which attached to S3 bucket only. You can't attach an S3 bucket policy to a user or to a group or to a role. They can only be attached to S3. Uh, likewise, you cannot attach them to EC2 or to Lambda or any other S3 bucket, you know, any other services. S3 bucket policies specify, specify, specifically specify what actions are allowed or denied on the bucket and they can be broken down to a user level as well. So, if Shivangi can do a put but not a delete and uh, let's say John can uh, read but not put uh, etc this type of actions you can de completely define in the bucket policy okay so the bucket level actions if you wanted to do you specify the bucket policy okay so what are the use cases if we talk about or why we should why would we use bucket s3 bucket instead of an IAM policy that can be some questions um, well, let's say maybe you want a simple way to grant cross account access to your S3 environment without using IAM roles. You can use S3 bucket policies in this scenario. So other people uh, with other AWS account can actually go in, read and write to your bucket. And also you might use this if your IAM policy bump up against the size limit. Okay, because all the buck Policies has a size limits of 20 KB. If it's if it's increased, you have to attach the other policy to uh, to the IAM. Uh, but if it's if it's there, uh, then you can have uh, this uh, this uh, bucket policy. So IAM policy themselves only allow uh, for up to two kilobyte of for users and five kilobyte for groups, and that's like a 10 kilobyte for roles. S3 supports basically 20 kilobytes of bucket policy, and you might want to use a a bucket policy where your policy in quite a bit bigger than what you're using for IAM. Okay, so then of course you might just want to use it if you prefer to keep your access control policies in the S3 environment. Um, to be very honest, uh, I would say that where you would really use it is is on specifically uh, scenarios of the requirement of the buckets. It sometimes is a lot easier to manage a specific bucket than to go out and generate a policy that denies access. In a particular bucket for everyone in 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 the organization. So imagine if you are if you have an organization that has forty thousand employees, they are all in different groups and subgroups, and even subgroups upon uh, upon that uh, we need to deny access to a specific bucket. Uh, we only want to be able to uh, access this bucket. So because it has everyone's performance reviews in it, it is much easier for uh, us to go in and create. A deny all policy on that bucket than to go into IAM and start trying to figure out how to deny access to this bucket to every single 40,000 IAM user within the organization and roll that out. Okay, so the best use case for an S3 bucket policy is is where you trying to manage individual buckets and let's uh, and 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 then you you apply this bucket policy and that's what we see by creating uh, two different users and and making them to access it okay so that's that's a bucket policy access control policy access control list policy we talked about that to specifically uh with the objects 
so let's come back and let me just go to IAM and I want to disable the two of the users which we created. Okay, so I'll just delete these two users. Hey viewers, are you looking for formal training on SRE practices? Take our SRE program. This course will teach you how to successfully implement site reliability engineering in the modern day 24 into 7 services. Kickstart your SRE training today. Contact info is mentioned in the video sidebars and in the description box. Book your seats for the upcoming batches now. Okay, so I did delete that. Uh, so we have two of the users deleted okay so um so yeah so that is about access control list uh, bucket policies and bucket overview um now uh, with the bucket policy also we can easily enforce encryption um uh, you know what happens is like for example i have a bucket over here and i have an object inside that Okay, and I have an object, so let me just delete this bucket policy. I want to delete this bucket policy, so I will delete that. Okay, so delete it. Okay, so the bucket policy has been deleted. Uh, let's go back. So I need demo to. All right, so I have a I have a object over here, and when I when I access this object. Um, I will have it denied because I did make that uh, goes as you know like for an example if I open it from here I'll be able to see it okay and even when it comes to open it and even if I say HTTP I'm able to see it okay so as I said data has a type data can be on rest data can be on motion data can be uh, can be unused, right? So while we transmit, you know, transit our data is in motion, we really want that uh, the data has to go on always on HTTPS, right? So if you really want to do that and enforce an HTTPS um, on your objects, so what you can do is you can, um, you know, you can make that happen. For how you enforce encryption? That is the topic. How you enforce encryption? To uh, to the object, right? How you enforce encryption to the object so that every time the object and uh, you know the object is being exchanged, you make sure that it's been always opening up into an HTTPS instead of an HTTP. Okay, so how you're going to do that? So to implement this, we can use a bucket policy, in, and in a bucket policy, we can write it out the condition saying that okay. This is my condition. If if anyone try to open uh, the objects inside this bucket on um, on on HTTP, then do not open it. Okay. So how do you do it? You go back to again your bucket. Okay, and go to permission. Go back to your bucket policy. All right. And now we will uh, add a bucket policy again. So click on that, add it. We'll click on policy generator again. Okay, and then we'll select the bucket policy. Okay, and then we'll say over here star. Okay, so everyone, whoever have an access. Uh, okay, so here we have to see what actions, right? Here we have to say, okay, if you have to uh if i have to read this out or whether i have to do what so this is what you have to specify here that what action you wanted to do or you wanted to uh you know enforce on so how you will how you'll force encryptions right so how do you enforce that so to do it you have to uh you have to say that principal is star and if anyone to access or that means a get object so if anyone clicks on get objects, we'll just see for the get object where it is. Um, anyone clicks on get object, okay? So if anyone clicks on or anyone try to access it, so get object is there. So if anyone says, hey, I want to get the object, then um, then they should be allowed to. 
um, you know they should be allowed to have an access on or or i would say by default it should be denied that everyone wants to get an object should be denied okay everyone should be denied when they try to get an object on what resource resource would be the the ar in which you have so we'll copy the ARN from here we'll go back to the policy generator we'll paste that ARN. okay and then we'll click on uh, uh we'll click on add condition and in the condition what we are going to do is we are going to add a one code condition saying that um it's a bool value first of all so it's a bool okay and bool and again on the bool i'm going to say that um AWS secure transport AWS there's an option called AWS secure transport so over here if secure transfer is false uh, right if secure transport is false then add condition then add statement if secure transport is false um, then a person should be denied like all persons should be denied when the when it comes to HTTP Okay, that's secure transport so secure transport is basically to make sure that a data transported or if someone access my object in the bucket it has to come from HTTPS okay and then click on generate policy their policy will be generated copy this policy from here copy this policy go back paste star okay save the changes thanks for watching want to study further join our training programs today